When should we not practice Qigong? That is going to be the topic of this episode of Qi Life. So as you know, if you've watched this vlog for a while, I talk a lot about Qigong on it and how beneficial it can be and how it can be applied to so many different things. And even in one of the fairly recent vlogs, uh, I talked about how in a sense, depending on where we're at with our practice, eventually basically everything we do within our day-to-day -day lives can become a type of Qigong practice. And that's because if we're bringing our awareness of energy to what we're doing, whatever it is, not just our specific Qigong practice sessions, if we're bringing our awareness of energy to it and um, consciously working with that energy, developing more skill with it, well, that is Qigong. So with that in mind, when should we not practice Qigong? I'll give you a short list of the sorts of situations uh, that we shouldn't practice Qigong in to begin with, um, with a bit of a proviso that it's not necessarily strictly that we shouldn't do any Qigong, but we're probably not going to practice Qigong in the way that we normally would, and that we might have a few yeah, ways that we adapt our practice or certain types of practice that we focus on, or some extra um, provisions around our practice for, for, for safety or to make sure they're beneficial for us. So, a real short list, when we're too sick, when we're too tired, when we're too emotionally upset, uh, when we're too busy or too distracted so that we can't put our, our attention onto what we're doing, uh, when our environment is not suitable, and there's a whole lot of um, ways that our environment may not be suitable, again I'm going to come back and talk about each of these again, uh, and then when we have a major energy imbalance within our system already. Okay, so let's go through them one by one and some of the provisos around that as well. When we're too sick. Sometimes when we're really, really sick, the best thing for us is to just rest. To not really try to do anything. Just rest, let our body take care of itself. And you know, in a sense, you could take that as a type of Qigong practice because you're listening to your body. Because there's a bit of judgment and discernment uh, required for this to judge it like, okay, am I so sick that I need to rest? Or actually is my energy and my body healthy enough that some, some practice would benefit me? If you listen to that, sometimes the best thing is just rest. Lie down, sleep, wh whatever it is. And that's going to be the best thing for you. And practicing too actively, too intently during that time will actually just drain you. You're not going to get the benefit from it. Yeah. Now, again, with that judgment, sometimes if you're like a little bit better than that, well, you can do some very gentle practice. And gentle is means both in terms of the body and the mind, where you're not, you know, focusing too intently, but with a very gentle focus. Yep, you can do some gentle practice that might help you. All right. When we're too tired, this really goes with the too sick one. It, it can be at times that we just exhaust ourselves too much, and like really what we need is to just rest. Um, other times when we're tired, again, there's some judgment required. So, okay, what kind of tired are we? Because there can be a level of tired that's still very tired, but not quite, you know, not quite all the way there that just resting is the absolute best thing for us. And in that situation, doing, uh, again, doing very gentle practices that focus on building up our energy um, can be really good, can help us to overcome that. Similarly, there's different types of tiredness and sometimes we may seem to be tired as in having a lack of energy but really the issue is is that our energy has become blocked and stagnant and in those situations doing practices to clear the blocked energy clear the stagnant energy is actually going to be really good um, even if it takes a bit of effort you know because we're feeling tired it takes a bit of effort to get into that and get clear those blockages and then the fresh energy can flow and that rebuilds our energy as well all right when we're too emotionally upset i covered this in a whole separate vlog recently so Mainly, I'll put a link to that one in the description below so you can watch the whole thing. The main thing here is that um, our emotions have a big effect on our body, our mind, our energy. And when they're too strong, too upset, too disordered in some way, well, we don't want to be storing that up or circulating that too strongly 
So we can practice at those times, but we don't want to do that type of practice. We want to focus on the types of practice that will either discharge or transform that emotional energy. So again, I'll, I'll put a link to the other vlog that you might want to look at about that for more information about that. All right, when we are too busy or too distracted, so we can't focus. Within Qigong, as I've mentioned many times, there are three main tools that we use in most practices, mind, body, and breath. And we bring all of these together to become aware of, connect with our energy, and, and do things with it, work with it, develop skill with it. Sometimes we bring other things in as well, but these are the main tools. If we're too busy, too distracted, a couple of things that can happen. If we're too busy, we might feel inclined to rush our Qigong practice. And so we might actually end up directing our energy, but we do it in a rushed way, which may not be beneficial to us. So we really want to avoid that. One way around this is to, to learn to be comfortable, sometimes actually doing short practice sessions and, and really bringing your practice sessions down so that you can fit them in even when you feel busy. And when you're doing them, you don't feel rushed so that you can actually settle into them and really be conscious, really be aware while, while you're doing it because you don't feel like you have a time pressure. You know it's not going to take you long and you can fit that in and be fully present for that. Um, I guess somewhat similar with being distracted, it's going to take your mind away from what you're uh, doing with your energy. And if you're connecting somewhat to your energy, it, but then you're distracted, again, you might direct your energy in some ways that aren't useful to you, not healthy to you. So sometimes you're better to go, okay, what do I need to do? to sort out this distraction, maybe go off and you know take care of something first, then come back. Or again, possibly you can focus on doing some types of Qigong practice or meditation that specifically helps you to bring your focus back and be present. And yeah, so focus on that type of practice rather than ones where you're um, directing the energy and circulating it and storing it and so on. All right, what were all the ones I mentioned? We've got a few more. Um, our environment. So maybe if we've got um, an environment that's not suitable for us. Now, what could that mean? Our environment affects us. Again, I've, I've talked about that in one of the recent vlogs as well. Sometimes um, we can sort of develop a mentality of that, you know, all that matters is what's inside us and so on. And, and you know, in some situations, that's all we have to work with. So it's healthy to work with that. Um, but there's no denying the impact our environment can have on us. And sometimes what's around us in our environment can be very disruptive to our energy. And, and this can be all sorts of things. It can be having like strong electromagnetic fields, you know, in, in, in the environment around you. Some things that are, you know, really, really strong fields. Or um, things where maybe there's very emotionally charged interactions going on nearby and energy is coming off that and, you know, and into your space. Or maybe even things like it's too hot, you know, simply it's too hot, you know, and that's not going to be good to do certain types of practices. Or maybe you're somewhere where um, there's some pollution and the air is very polluted and that's not going to sort certain types of practices as well. So with this, in terms of interacting with the environment, again, as with the others, it's not strictly that you can't do any kind of practice. Um, it's more that uh, you're, you're going to need to modify your practice to take into account what's going on in the environment around you and, and ideally, if possible, move yourself to a better environment, right? Um, but there can be things like, say, there's some disturbed energy around you, you can't move away. Uh, you know, sometimes the better thing is, in, well, maybe all you'll do is actually focus on strengthening your own energy field, not necessarily doing an active practice, but just gently sending your energy out to keep your, yourself protected uh, from that disruptive energy around you and that's your practice you know that, that and that is a kind of practice in a sense but it's maybe not you know some of the the movements and things that you might normally do because often to get the most benefit from some of our practices we really need to relax release and open open things so they can circulate more freely open so naturally energy comes in from our environment more and if there's unpleasant things in our environment that's really not going to be um, healthy for us at all and then I think there was one more that I mentioned as well. What was that one? Hmm, environment. I don't remember at this point. <laughs> That's a bit of a blooper. Uh, 
But I think you get the idea. Um, there are sometimes times, oh, that was it. And this, this is a little bit different um, from some of the others. When we have a major or significant energy imbalance. So again, this is not that we strictly shouldn't do any Qigong practice when we have a major energy imbalance. So that there needs to be a lot more care around it. Because if we start to work with our energy when there's a major imbalance, what can happen is we can actually just flow more energy into a dysfunctional pattern, uh, which can potentially, well, certainly not make it better and possibly make things worse. In these sorts of situations, Qigong practice is, of course, potentially still really beneficial, but it might be that you need a bit of extra guidance about specifically what type of practice you should be doing to help bring that uh, imbalance back into balance. Because you certainly don't want to do your practice and think you're doing yourself good, but actually you're reinforcing a dysfunctional pattern, making things worse. All right, so yeah, I think you get the general picture that um, there's always different ways that we can be bringing our awareness of energy and we can be working with energy to some degree. And in almost all situations, there's ways that we can, it's not that we can't do Qigong at all, but we might need to be much more selective about the type of practice we do. Whether it's a very gentle practice, you know, possibly just something using a gentle uh, mental intent and awareness, um, gentle breath work, you know, things like that or whether it's specifically focusing on discharging energy or transforming it rather than gathering it, circulating it, um, or whether it's about just being very careful about the type of uh, practice and how that's going to affect what's going on within our energy system. Um, yeah, hopefully that gives a fairly good overview of, of that aspect. There are times, and again, it's not so much that we shouldn't do Qigong at all, but that we, it's not, it's actually not good to do our Qigong maybe the way that we just normally would. All right, I hope this has been an interesting one. I look forward to seeing you on another vlog soon.